can't believe I'm filming this. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Warren. So that will be you, okay? You will be getting instruction from that thing, okay, on, on other days. So this is Calc 3, okay. Um, I am Dr. Warren. Yeah, I'm Dr. Warren, okay. Um, guys, we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best, okay? The most important thing, look at me, team, is you stay healthy. You stay safe. That's the thing that only really matters. The only thing that really matters is your health. So if you're not feeling well, don't call you know, I mean, normally I'm like such a, who's had me before? Remember, like, I mean, I, I've got my attendance policy. I mean, I, I, know, I just have learned being attention deficit and being an academic failure for most of my life. Um, I just learned that, you know, for my kids to be successful, they need to be with me in order to, you know, but this semester and, you know, it's just, it's just not gonna be that way. The most important thing is for you to be healthy. I mean, like, if you're not feeling well, or you, and you know, it's like, for some of you, like, you, you might not even get, you get a little temperature or something like that, you're like, crap, I could go play a game of basketball right now. I feel that great. But you just kind of like have to be like, okay, we're gonna just play it, play it safe, okay? Um, we're gonna stay in when we don't feel well. If I don't feel well, you're not somebody who would come in with the flu and just teach, you know, like, it's just like, cause that's what the wizard prince, you are a green sun, okay? If you are half dead, you will still go to work. You know, so it's, it's against me and my, anything that I grew up with to not show up. You know, I mean, you play, you play hurt. That's, that's, but now suddenly it's a different game. You know, we got to like, we got to sit and rest. Okay? And, and we'll do it and we'll get through it. I mean, that's, that's, um, and we're going to learn as much as we can as we go through. The semester is going to be what it's going to be. I mean, I think everybody, everybody's like, okay, how many people think we're going to make it the entire semester? Yeah, look around. No, I like I breathe. We'll try not to breathe too much on each other. But I, I mean, I should, I should, I should be teaching here. I should, no, of course they can't see me. Sorry, 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 my camera people. Okay. Um, you know, I should teach here, but I just can't change. I mean, I've got, I've got, I just, I'm, I'm ADD. I'm attention deficit, and anybody who's had me before recognize, they know it. I'm attention deficit. I'm not organized. I mean, I, I try to be organized every year. This is the year I'm going to be organized, but you all know that. You, you make these 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 new school, you know, thing. This year I'm actually going to read my book, my Calc book. Some of you are like, no, no, not doing it, not doing it. Not doing it. Okay. So, um, so this 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 class is a killer. <laughs> just just okay. Think of yourself as Navy SEALs. Okay, that's what I want you to think about. You are Navy SEALs. This class is going to be a say say say. Stay quiet, you're not gonna breathe much. Okay, um, this class is gonna be totally this is it's complicated enough. Calc 2 is complicated enough, but everything we did was in the plane. Everything we did was like in two-dimensional space. This is all about pretty much three-dimensional space. You're like, well, Dr. Warren, I'm pretty comfortable with three-dimensional space. I live in three-dimensional I'm gonna catch the virus like this. Okay. I live in three-dimensional space. Okay, but guys, you've not done math in three-dimensional space. You're like, oh, the X, Y, the Cartesian coordinate system. You never thought, damn it, why did they start with X and Y? <laughs> what letter did they, what letters left? <laughs> Z, you never thought, oh, there's gonna be another one? <laughs> it's always been the X, Y. But you never thought, why did they do X, Y? You know, you didn't, you didn't anticipate getting pregnant with and birthing Z. You know, you didn't expect that. Suddenly everything's everything's going to change. And if we have, if we if we're, we're treating the class as memorization, we're screwed. There's a lot of memorization. But how many of you recognize you're not going to memorize your way through math? How many people have did that? In engineering, how many people in your engineering classes, physics classes? If you're in if you're in if you're in one of these technical, you're okay. You're in calculus. You know what it's like now. How many people are freshmen? If you're a freshman back there in the video world, welcome. Sorry, this is who I am. Okay, um, okay guys, slap your face. Wait, just gently. Say, so wake up. Because you're, I, how many people, this is your first class? 
Okay, you haven't been in the game for how long? Yeah, you're not in shape. You're not in shape, you're not in learning shape. Your side's gonna start hurting and you're gonna wanna vomit about five minutes from now. Here you are all like, well, I wasn't sure I was coming back after work. But then I just couldn't take another week at home. I just couldn't do it, I couldn't take another week at home. And Dr. Moore, I found, the, I watched all of Netflix. Everything Netflix has, I've watched. Okay, I've got nothing left to do but learn. And I miss learning. That's gonna go away. I'm thinking like 10 minutes, be like, oh crap. So yeah, let's, let's, let's get rid of that illusion right now. No, you want to learn. There's nothing better than learning. Now guys, I had a 1.9 high school grade point average. All right, don't. <laughs> I'm so used to like my students, like there's trust. We gain trust with each other as the semester goes along. I don't film stuff, I don't film what goes on. I mean, you guys know, you guys know what goes on in this room. I'm not gonna film this and put it on YouTube. Well, it's been nice teaching at JMU. Um, <laughs> pretty much we're gonna live, I mean, I don't use technology too much when I teach, but this semester I'm gonna use it more just because I think so much of the class is going to be based on technology, okay? So we're gonna live off of Canvas. That's the way we're going to at least do, do uh, getting information to you. I, I typically work off of files. So this would be like our class Canvas. This would, be, this would be files. This is what's in files right now. What's in files? What is in files? Flashcards, okay. Syllabus, synchronous, asynchronous, SMLC. What does SMLC stand for? Yeah, it's 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 the hospital. Okay, it's over in the health center, right? I mean, it's over there. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's calc help. Okay, it's calc help. Okay, and this is synchronous calc help. So even though they can't help you in person, even though they can't like do it like they've been like they've been, you can still get help, and you you can even get live help. You can even get live help. I can already tell you're already telling me. Some, like, you can look at me, you can look me in the eyes and not learn. I can just see it, I can see it in your eyes because I was you. I got a 0.0, .0 semester. <laughs> Zero, not, now I'm your teacher. That should frighten you, you should be terrified. <laughs> um, I just wanna show you guys, I mean like, this is the, well, I don't think you can memorize, well, I don't think you can memorize yourself through this class. Oh, I die. Okay. One time I did this and I hit my head right here. Not, not specifically on that one, but in one of my thoughts, and blood started coming down. It was like a horror movie. It was like scenes, it was like the movie Carrie. Like, you know, people have suspected hoses to come whipping around the room. Okay, you, you, you can't memorize your way through this, but you guys can, in fact, can you see me? <laughs> Sorry, bring it down. See, you'll appreciate it when you're the one watching this. Um, there's a lot you can get by with memorizing. Okay, I mean, like if if, if it, memorizing a play in football, I miss football. <laughs> memorizing a play in football. I mean, like if somebody says, "Run this route," and you got to sit there. Huh? 10 steps or eight steps? Do I go left or go right? Or are you gonna get killed on the field? Are you gonna get killed on the field? You know, you, you've got it, we gotta get it, we gotta get our patterns down. Re receivers, you're my wide receivers. You gotta run your routes, and you gotta run them enough so that they're almost second nature. How do you go know how to swim? Some of you don't know how to swim? Oh, good, there we go. Dr. Warren, are you really gonna make us raise our hands? Don't you realize there's a virus running around? I know, but it's just so hard for you not to teach this way. I wish we could all. Is this calculus, Dr. Warren? Yes. Okay, we're a gang. You're part of the Z team. You're part of the Z team gang, okay? And we need a gang symbol. We need a gang symbol, okay? Are we ready? Okay, I'm going to teach us a gang symbol, okay? First, we start like this. Put your finger out like you're pointing to somebody. Right hand. You got to use your right hand. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put up our thumb. I'm gonna stick this finger out. Mine's shaky, but yours isn't, like this. 
Let me go into this. Come on, do, do your gang sign. Let's go, come on. So if we see each other out in public without our masks on, I'm never doing that. Okay, this is also, this is also what we'll call the right-hand coordinate system. Dr. one, damn it. Okay. It, this is the right-hand coordinate system, okay? I'm using mine, I'm using mine. It's all in the name. What is it called? Do we have to talk, Dr. Martin? I don't want to breathe. Okay. Um, right-hand coordinate system, okay? And we'll come back to it, we'll come back to it. Okay, this is, this is it. So let's do our gang symbol. Come on, let's do it to the camera. Sorry, okay, Dr. Martin, I can't do this. I'm already regretting this choice. Okay, mm -hmm. just wait. Here's our first 150 flash cards. Okay, this is where we're going. This is our first what? 100 and? Dr. Warren, you're joking, right? You've got to be joking. Does it look like I'm joking? <laughs> Those are the first, say, 150. Okay, let's just look at number one. Definition, something like duck when I had you, I look happy now. This is a vector A, so that's A, say A. A, this is the symbol an element of, say that. Element of. That's just a letter. V, which will be our vector space, which will be our activity. So let's read at least this much of the first flash card again. Is an element of V. This is if it it's not if it. It's if and only if. Can you see me back there? It's if and only if. Okay, um, this symbol right here, now I'm not sure you can read it in the camera. It's there exists. Say that. There exists. Now you should be able to read that. A1. A1. A. This is an element of the real numbers. Okay, this is laziness for such that such that the vector A is equal to the vector of well, the components A1, A2, A3. This is flashcard one. I'm screwed, Dr. Warren. Here. Let's read it again. A is an element of V, if and only if there exists. A1, A2, A3, they're elements of the real numbers such that A is equal to the component version of the vector A1, A2, and A3. So there's the beginning. Now if they're called flashcards, guess what you're going to make? If they're called flashcards, guess what you're going to make? So what are you going to need? So yeah, between now and Friday, and I'll see you on Monday, I'll see you on Friday. Okay, us, um, between now and Friday, I want you to get a set of flashcards and start, we're gonna start making them, okay? How many people know that, I can't believe I'm gonna take this. Guys, all you have to do is open up the book and read five pages and you're gonna realize you're not gonna teach yourself this class. How many people, how many people kind of understand you're not gonna teach yourself this class, okay? Typically, I have such a strict attendance policy. I mean, because I know, being me, somebody who had the 0.0, .0 GPA, can you hear me, first of all? Can you hear me through this? Is it, is it okay? Can you hear me back there? No? Um, that in order for you to be successful, you've got to be here with me. In fact, I think of myself as the placenta. That's what I think of myself. I am the placenta. You all have umbilical cords that are attached to me. And typically I think like, as the placenta, if you're out there and that door's between us, you're starving. You're starving, you're not getting food. The umbilical cord is crimped, or worse. Ugh. Okay, so now, but this semester I can't. I'm like, if you, if you even sniffle, you probably shouldn't be here. But guys, I'm making, I'm making tapes. I'm, I'm sorry how bad this is. Okay, but I'm making, I'm making videos. I'm gonna have E umbilical cords. We're gonna have electronic <laughs> umbilical cords that attach to each of us. 
I really need you guys. I mean, like, if, if we're going to really learn this material, this stuff is so complicated. I mean, it's going to be unlike anything you've ever done before. I mean, it's hard enough. Do you guys remember in Calc 1 finding the maximum of a function? Do you remember doing that? You know, you're, you find the critical points. You find the local maxes, local mins. Guys, we're going to be talking about sheets in three-dimensional space. Surfaces. I mean, just imagine, look above us. And I'm, sorry. Look above us and imagine that there's this giant sheet, bed sheet, floating in the air above us. And we're going to be like, oh, you know, that represents cost. We want to find out where that cost is going to be its maximum. Dr. Warren, it's a sheet. How do you find that? You know, how do we figure out which direction to take to get our profit to increase the fastest? How do we, how do we determine like where the biggest stress is going to be on, on a roof that's looked like which shaped like this? I mean, this is going to be incredibly complicated. So I really need you with me. I really need you with me. And we really got to go back to the beginning and, and start understanding math from like the, really almost its genesis and start asking questions. You're already zoning me. I can already see it. So do this. Aww, come on, come on. Do it. Come here. Trust me. Just trust me. Trust me. Come on. I'm not teaching until you do it. You can't get viruses, so I can't go to sit here. Yeah, I, my biggest enemy as a teacher, my biggest enemy as a teacher is lack of prerequisite skills. Like if you don't know Calc 1 really well and you're in Calc 3, it's going to be hard and there's not much I can do. My next biggest enemy in the American education system is boredom, okay? Boredom. Students sitting politely at their seats not learning. Okay? I mean, and that I can take care of. Okay, that, I, that we'll deal with. But, but, but I can't deal with lack of prerequisite skills. So if I call you out, I like to think of my classroom as a hostage situation. That's what I like to think of. Not, more, not much more of a classroom as a hostage situation. Because hostages never know what will happen next. They'll be like, would he really do that? My students, the one I got from last time. Yes, he would. He would do that. He would do that. I mean, we've watched him. Okay. Would he really do that? And so, so, and you guys, it looks more like a hostage situation right now as I look around the room. It's never quite looked like this, where everybody's masked, okay? This is surreal, isn't it? But it's also gonna be fun. You're gonna tell your grandkids all about this. You can tell your grandkids about the time we didn't have football. The time there wasn't March Madness. There was madness, okay? But there wasn't March Madness. And it's okay. It's okay if it's not okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna take it a day at a time. Are you in? Again, how many is this in your first class? I want you guys to feel safe. I want you to feel welcomed. Not like you're walking around like little virus carriers and everybody's afraid of you. I want you to feel welcomed. I want you to feel like, you know, I'm actually gonna learn something this semester. And I want this to be a really positive year. Okay? And we're going to do our best to make that happen. Okay? Because you guys are the future. <laughs> Second one, that scares us. Now, you guys are the future. I'm not afraid. I, I, I'm, I, I am optimistic. Because I know my generation. So I'm optimistic about your generation. <laughs> I learn so much from you guys. I learn so much every year from you guys. I learn how to be a better human being every year from you guys. Okay. Back to Cal 3. Do you see this? Do you guys see these? Do you guys see these? Let's, let's just scroll down the list. Read that. Vector, vector, A1 plus scalar T times vector D1. Like, Dr. Warren, we're screwed. We're screwed. Okay, so, so really, just like Navy SEALs, 
I want you guys to be aware and be afraid. Yes? Can you zoom in on the page? Zoom in on the page. Can't really see some of the That's a good idea, even for those that don't. Thank you. Yeah. Is that better? Perfect. Is that better for you guys in video world? Okay, so, so it's lines A1 plus T times D1. And A2 plus T2. Intersect, come get guys now. So when we're thinking about this, this is a line shooting through three-dimensional space. You know, imagine another line shooting through, just imagine jets, jets flying past each other. If I think about jets flying through three-dimensional space, are they often going to intersect? Would that be bad? Okay, so but I mean, we can imagine. So let's imagine that they do intersect. We're asking, what's the angle between them? So, so I've got a line. This stuff is so thinking cool. Okay, I've got a line shooting through three-dimensional space. I've got another line shooting through three-dimensional space, and they intersect. And we can find the angle between the lines. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't that be fun to know how to do that? Would it be important if you're building a truss like this to know the angle in between them when you're talking about forces? Okay, so I need you to get, I need you to make, I need you to buy what? Is that what you mean? I need you to buy flashcards, okay? So I need you to buy flashcards. There's some flashcards I don't think you'll be able to draw as well as I want you to draw. So I call these geometry flashcards. It's kind of like kindergarten. You take it and you get your scissors out and you go, start for more sound effects. Then we do, and then we fold them and just tape them. And then you've got those flashcards. Like, did you really want to draw this thing? Did you really want to draw this? Is that good? So, you're, you're, so those are there for you. Okay. Announcements. Now this is the textbook homework. This is the textbook homework. Okay. This is homework I am not going to collect. I am not going to collect. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. Talking to the hundred kids that aren't going to be here. You. Okay. This is stuff I'm, what did I just say? No. <laughs> not going to collect. Okay. How many people know how to swim? What's the only way to learn how to swim? Collective. Watching somebody else swim. No, that's not the way to learn how to swim. I know how to swim. I know Cal 3. Okay. The only way to do, the only way to learn Cal 3 is by doing Cal 3. And just like learning and digesting anything, it's always best to do it every day. Does that make sense? How many people eat every day? How many people eat every day? It works well though, right? It works well. In fact, I'm gonna eat the moment I get out of this class. And um, how many people get rid of food every day? Since I'm taping, I won't say. I mean, people would like get rid of food. Do you know what I'm saying? It's code. It's code, guys. It's our code. Get rid of food. It works best that way, right? It works best that way. If you're not getting rid of, I'll just pretend I'm here, getting rid of food. If you're not getting rid of food every day, is that an issue? Is that an issue? Yeah, it probably is an issue. Okay, now, does it sound like a good idea to save three weeks worth of food and eat it all in one sitting the night before the test? Does that sound like a good idea? Because you know what happens the next day? The mess that comes out when you're getting rid of the food on the test it's not pretty, it's not pretty. So what's the best way to learn Calc 3? Do it every day, do it every day. So, so, so these, now guys, I'm not doing anything clever. This announcement is always gonna be the same announcement. I'm just gonna add more to it. I'm gonna delete it. And so where can you find the homework? Announcements. announcements, okay? So this is your first homework assignment. This is your first homework. But it's not for Friday. We won't get through enough. Um, that's the way I spent all of them I just always looked out the window. Then one day, then one day, my teacher was 
what are you looking at, Paul? And I'm like, well, Gary Douglas has his book, and he's breaking every single bus light on the buses. And, you know, he went down and broke like 20 bus lamps all in a row. Then all the kids ran to the window at that point in time. But every time I was like, all I remember of elementary school was the window. Where were we, Dr. Warren? This is your homework, first assignment. Will I collect it? No. Will I grade it? No. Will you do it? Yes, okay. Um, you're going to need a Cengage access code. How many people have used WebAssign? If you were in my class, I know you have, okay? If, you, if, you, if you're gonna be, I mean, when you bought that, it should last for all three courses, so you shouldn't need a new code, okay? It should last for all three courses, that Cengage access code. That's what they told us when we got the contract, so if you already bought it once, you shouldn't have to buy it again. Okay, um, now let me just show you. It's been a long time, hasn't it, since you sat through a lecture, right? I mean, it doesn't look good. Like, doesn't it already feel like you've been here for an hour? Look at your watches, look at your own, look at whatever you have to tell time, look at it. What time is it? What time is it? Look, look at your watches in the video too. I know, you're already scrolling through me, Ugh. okay? It's 10, 12, what time does class end? What time does class end? <laughs> Dr. Warren, that's forever. <laughs> this is purgatory. I know, I'm getting back in the game too. Um, I, won't, I, I won't be putting too much, if we, have, if we go online, I'm gonna be using assignments all the time. So I'm, yeah, we'll go online, I'm gonna use, because that's the way we're gonna get stuff back and forth to each other, okay? But until then, I'm not gonna be using that. It's gonna be announcements and files. What did I just say? I should have been talking, but okay. Announcements and files. So this is this is what WebAssign. You guys have seen this before. Um, WebAssign. I'll be putting up assignments on WebAssign. Now I'm ass assigning the odds. I'm assigning the odds as homework. On WebAssign, I'm going to choose typically the problem right beside it as an even. So if you do the odd, will you be able to do the even? And the even's going to be the web assignment. So I haven't made an assignment, your focus. Sorry, I know me. Okay. Focus back there in the video. Okay, when when you when first web assign's gonna be due next Friday. The first web assign's gonna be due next Friday. Now here's the book. Oh, you got it. Okay, this is what we're going to start in chapter twelve. Can you see that back? Can you, can you see that well enough? If I can zoom in again, I'm like a, I, I break everything. But you can see with the odds, they already have the with the odds, they already have the answer right there. So you don't even need to go to the back of the book. They made it. Pretty soon, like you wonder, like what your kids? Will there just be a computer standing beside them? I don't want to push the answer, please. I don't want to have to go through that. I mean, I'm mean, like, we're like, I don't want to go to the back of the book. Are you kidding? Oh, oh damn it! I got, I got to find that answer now. Now it's just right here. You wonder, like, with your generation, the, the answer is C. Okay, so read this question to me. Just read this question to me. Read it. Distance from the point. The x-axis, and so so it's even hard for you to visualize that right now. And then we've got these we've got these other things here, but this is where things are. In each of the sections, they've got a video there that you can click on that's okay they're not real long to but this point we have dealt with the xy plane and the two-dimensional world but notice where you are sitting right now and look around the room we live in a three-dimensional world so it makes sense to have a three-dimensional coordinate system so we add yeah, a three axis out the window which right is perpendicular to the x and y axis Oh, oh, is the origin. Okay, so. What's the point? Zero, zero, zero. 
We can now. Okay, so this this is here for you guys. I mean, it's, it's just an extra thing for you, just just in these things. And they got videos in each of the sections. The, one of the most important things, and I'm not sure all you guys know about this. How many people have been on the ebook before? How many people have been on the ebook? Okay, so so if you haven't, this is a game changer right here. Because if you don't know about these, they have worked out. They have video exercises work out for you. So let's assume that I assign like this exercise, exercise 15, and you're screwed. You have no idea what to do. Find an equation of the sphere that passes through the point 4, 3, negative 1, and hence center 3, 8. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to find the uh, uh, equation of the we're gonna be sphere then sphere that goes sphere through these two points in three dimensions. center of 3, 8, 1. Let me just draw a quick picture of this sphere. I'm not going to try and put it in the coordinate axes. So if you don't, these are in every single, these are in every single section in that book, these video exercises. How many people didn't know they were there? How many people didn't know they were there? See, I feel like a failure on that. Also, they have these kinds of exercises. Can you read what that says? So this will do a problem where you can try it, and if you don't get it right, it'll give you graduated help instead of just telling you how to do it. It'll help you work through it. So there's there's other exercises for you. So. All of this, all of this is, I am the, I am the placenta. Okay, this is your main source of help. Like Dr. Wan, I'm screwed. I, can't, I don't think I can connect with you at all. Okay, placenta, placenta. Okay, I, um, but you, but you, the whole, you have the SMLC to get help. Okay, you've got the SMLC to get help. And you also have the book and various things to get help. Um, So to get, let's just say you don't have a, you don't have a Cengage access code right now. You can still get on the WebAssign. You can still get on the WebAssign. Now notice what does this say? And can you see it? Oh, let me try it. Make sure this will work. No. Nope. What does this say? Warning. Warning. Say that again. No phones. What does that say? Okay, so yeah, this is your key. This is your key. So even if you don't have an access code right now, you can still get onto WebAssign, you can still get a hold of the ebook. So you can still do your homework. You can still do your homework. You can still do your homework too. Okay, um, you just you just plug that in. It's a two-week grace period they give you, and after that, you're kicked out if you don't if you don't enter your um, your Cengage access code. Um, I've never done this before, but guys, for this class, I've created a a group me. How many of you have done, are familiar with group me before? I've done in group me. I mean, I listen. I, I hadn't. I didn't have a phone until a year ago. I'm not going to be able to do group me. Okay, but I will. I will. I will. I set up the group me for you guys to have each other. How many people felt a little panic last March when suddenly everything was gone? When all your resources were suddenly taken away from you? Okay, I want to make sure you guys have other Navy SEALs to connect with. <laughs> you saw the flashcards, right? You saw those flashcards? You, you saw the flashcards? How many people recognize there's going to be moments where you're going to feel like you're drowning in water and like, help me, help me, help me, help me. That really says, that really means. Groovy, 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 groovy. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. We have to take. We have a test tomorrow. What do we do with this? I have no idea what I'm doing. You, you send out a, send out to the group me, and if you guys are kind human beings, you'll see the distress call, and you will answer the call. Okay, this is a. Uh, uh, I can't believe I can't have my entire class in the room. So 
So 50% of the time you get to enjoy this in person. <laughs> you're like, well, those people at home, they're lucky. They're the lucky ones, okay? Um, the other time you're gonna get to watch whatever's coming in on that thing, okay? I'll put it online on YouTube for you. Okay, what are you not allowed to do and drive? Drink, <laughs> text, have anything in your ears, and so on and so on and so on. If you can't do it and drive, how many people know how to drive? You already know how to drive. You don't know Cal 3. You shouldn't, you know, I don't want any technology out unless I say, unless it's, unless it's related to the class. Okay, I don't want you texting, I don't want you doing anything. I just want you guys, I just want you guys engaged in the class as much as possible. SMLC, like I said, you're not gonna be seeing them in person you can still get help. Homework every day. Homework every day. Uh, does that mean class days or posts on Tuesday, Thursday as well? It's, it's, no, I won't post it. Everything I'll post. Guys, this material is, is so complicated. I mean, it's not that complicated, but it's, it'll be complicated. It will seem complicated to you that we won't even do a section a day. You know, we'll be stuck in some sections for a long time. When we talk about curvature and the T and B coordinate system, hold them on tight. I mean, it's really cool. It model, you can use it to model roller coasters. But when we are like, whoa, I mean, X, Y, Z is great. When we're talking about a, like a missile flying, a missile flying through, you want something, you want a coordinate system that's on the missile, not something back here on the earth. Okay. To get you guys on, if you have any problems getting onto Webassign, you have any problems with your access code, if you have an access code and it's saying it's not gonna work, you wanna contact our, our, our um, Cengage representative. She's great, Rachel McCoy. Rachel's awesome. And she's, she can't meet you in person this year. But she's going to have these Zoom sessions. She'll have these Zoom sessions to make sure you get on. Okay, so so those are there in the syllabus for you. I have never done this. I've, I've always done three tests. If you had me before, three in class tests, five quizzes, and a cumulative final exam. That's always been my evaluation. I love giving cumulative finals because I'm afraid a lot of kids who are like me. It just takes me a long time to learn. I'm slow, you know, and I might bomb one or two tests. But sometimes by the final exam, I finally had enough information that I could at least give some semblance of success. And so I like to make sure I saw the entire course on that final exam. I think of tests as like testing the rocket. We test something to make sure we don't kill anyone. Right? And we test it to see where the weaknesses are, then we fix them. The final exam is like shooting the rocket off. This semester, though, we're not going to have a final. We're not going to have a final exam. We're going to have a final project. We're going to have a final project. And we'll talk more about that um, as the semester goes along. We're not even going to have tests. We're going to have quests. It's a video game. You're going to go on quests, okay? How many quests do you have? Seven, Seven quests. How much of the grade does it count? Seventy percent. Okay. So they're not really quizzes. They're going to be far more than quizzes, but they're also not really tests. So then, like, I know it's not clever, but I called them quests. They're like part, part. I don't know why I'm here. And then you're gonna have a final project that's worth 15%, 15%. Notice the rough draft is worth, and it's due October 30th, okay? Um, you know, I talked about that's forever away. That's forever away, we're in August. The web assign and the worksheets that we do is gonna be worth 15%. And guys, these, these seven quests are gonna go on Oh, 
they're not going to be I mean, the information, certainly the information builds off each other, but they're going to be related to like distinct chapters at a time. So unlike something where a final, a cumulative final, you're going to be learning something, getting tested on it, quested on it, learning something else and get quested on it, and something like that. Just because I don't know how the semester's going to go. Okay, does this make sense? Does this make sense? So I want to get more evaluations. I want over shorter amounts of time, shorter amounts of content. Um, and they're not going to be necessarily looking back at other things. Just because we're just trying to survive the semester. We're all in masks. Okay, we're all in masks. And then there's a bunch of other information in here that you guys can read. Or not. I know you probably won't. Okay. I still have an attendance policy. I mean, if you're not gonna be with me, I need to know it. If you're sick, I mean, I'm a lifeguard. I'm like the lifeguard in the lifeguard stand. If you're, if you're not gonna be here, if you get coronavirus, you know, if you, I mean, if, if, if it happens, I mean, I need you guys, I mean, first of all, we, we, I need you at home, not here. I mean, I pray that it'll be mild. Um, and I, and you know, when you go, like I said, it's not, it's my, my MO has always been come in sick. You know, do it, do it hurt. Um, but, but that's just not who we are. But if it happens, you gotta let me know. I mean, I already have, I've already had a couple of emails from students that have coronavirus. You know, so they're like, I feel fine, Dr. Warren. You know, but so, so we, I've gotta communicate to you. I gotta communicate to you. I gotta try to teach you when you have coronavirus. No, I, but the most important thing, guys, is for you to rest, be healthy. There is no, Dr. Warren had a 0 0.0, 0.0, .0 semester GPA. I left the school, I'll tell you. I left the school, but now I'm your, I'm your professor. I mean, you can survive it. You can survive it. And you guys are all smarter than me. I mean, I need you guys playing. You know, I mean, if you're gonna be, you're gonna be here. Pick up your racket, Tammy. And then, and then my, one of my daughters, and like, and like we go out play tennis. She's like, I'm not playing. And I'm like, you're gonna play. She's like, I'm not playing. I'm like, you're either gonna use that racket to hit the ball back or for protection. And then I'm gonna serve the ball at your head at 50 miles an hour. Okay, you're either gonna hit it back. Okay? It's the same thing. If you're in this room, if you're in this room, I need you participating. Now, if you're not comfortable like doing group work, I get that. But you're going to have flashcards. You're going to be flashing each other in here. Okay, you're going to have those flashcards. One of the best things to learn is is by just memorizing things. But you can do that from there. Right? You guys can you can be comfortable like doing that and then flashcarding, not breathing. What time does class end? Dr. Warren, it's already been five hours. It's just been five hours already. And this is my first class. I haven't even done engineering yet. Physics. Flipped classroom. That was fun, right? <laughs> Sorry. So I need you guys, I need you guys letting me know. Let, let the lifeguard know when you're not going to be there. Let the lifeguard know when you're struggling in the water. Okay, let me know. Okay, because I'm the one who can help you the most. And you're gonna feel it, guys. You saw those flashcards, you see what's coming. There's gonna be times you're just feeling like overwhelmed. And with everything else, I mean, let's let's just let's just cut some people some slack. I mean, let's let's give each other slack. Let's just okay, we get it. It's not gonna be a normal semester. Oh. Stretch. When you get to be 59, everything hurts. Okay, sit back down. No coffee. No. 50, yeah. I've got five daughters. Did I tell you that? No sons. Five daughters. Imagine what that's like. 
Imagine what that's like. Five daughters. My youngest is a senior here at JMU. I put three of my daughters through JMU just because I believe in it. Um, I don't get any tuition break. <laughs> I know, it's insanity. But I so believe in the school that I, I put three of my kids. They're like, well, Dr. Owen, why would you believe in a school like that? Well, because like I was an art major in undergrad. I was an art major. Um, and there was only one school that would take a chance on me for grad school. And guess which school that was? Proud alum, James Madison University. And I always said, you know, like, if I ever make it, and there was a lot of times I was sure I wasn't going to make it. Groupie, groupie, groupie. I, mean, I, I, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to make it. But I thought if I ever make it, if I could come back and sow into the place that took a chance on me, that's what I was going to do. And so that's what I'm, I'm here trying to get back, the place that gave, gave to me. Um, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, let's start Cal 3. Like, okay, Dr. Warren. So let's get ready to take notes. You haven't done that in a while. Are you ready? I've got an entire 20, 28 minutes to do this. Um, fortunately, for you, you in video land, it's going to seem pretty simple. In fact, you're going to zone, it's going to seem pretty simple. But look at me. I'm starting off where you're comfortable in the shallow end before throwing you in to the wave pool. Okay, we're going to start off easy, okay, where you're getting your face wet in the freezing cold pool, okay, because if, you, if, if we don't understand it in the shallow end, we're not going to do well swimming in the deep end. So we're going to start with the real numbers. That funny R represents the real numbers. Now, the best visual representation of the real numbers is the number line is a number line. And on the number line, we put the two numbers they give us in the real numbers. You know, many of you don't even know this, but they essentially only give you two numbers. They give you a zero, your additive identity, and they give you a one, your multiplicative identity. That's the only numbers you're given in the very beginning. There's about these 20 properties, okay? These two numbers, and with every, all the rest of the real numbers come from that. One plus one has to be a real number by closure. And we call that number two, and then we can get all the rest of them by adding. Every one of these have to have an additive inverse that'll get us back to zero. So there's like a negative two and a negative one and so on. Everybody has to have a multiplicative inverse. There has to be a number times two that'll get you to one. Dr. Ryan already zoning. There has to be a number times two that'll get you to one. What number is that? A number times two, a number times two that will get you to one. One half, one half yeah, and, and we can show that we fall here on the number one. Now, for a long time, they thought the only numbers would be numbers that would be like positive or negative whole numbers, integers, or something that would be an integer times somebody else's multiplicative inverse. And we call these numbers the rational numbers. But I didn't realize, like when I was in high school, I always thought the rational numbers meant not the insane numbers, like pi and square root of two, not those crazy numbers. I never got. What word is that? Ratio. <laughs> it's the fraction of two integers. It's the fraction of two integers. The Pythagoreans. I hope you can see that. Up. The Pythagoreans hit this thing where they, they could take something of a square where one side was one and the other side was one. And they could certainly get the. I break everything. I just don't want to break you guys this semester. I'm not going to breathe. Okay, one and one, and they could put a rope or a string from corner to corner, but they could never find a ratio of two integers that would represent that length. 
And then ultimately they were able to show there wasn't one by a proof by contradiction, which meant there were numbers that were real, you could see the link, but they weren't rational, or ratio to an integers, which means they're irrational. And unbelievably, there's a lot more irrational than rational. Most of the numbers are irrational. But if I think about all of them, if I think about all of them, I can represent them as a number one. Now, how many people realize we don't live in a one-dimensional world? How many people realize we don't live in a one-dimensional world? Can you imagine, like, right now, one class, one just, we live on a number line? Six feet. Six feet. I mean, can you imagine how boring that would be? But everything that you've done, including in calculus, up to this point in time, has been where we take two of these number lines, we call this one the x, we call this one the y, we didn't call the number line, we called them axes. Okay, and Descartes gave us this thing called the Cartesian coordinate system. Now over here, if I take two points, like that one, what does that look like to you guys? What do you think that is? I mean, I'm just waking you up. What does that look like? I mean, just what do you think that is? I mean, more roughly, what is it? Maybe a three, and let's put a, what, what is that one roughly? What's that one roughly? Four. Four. Four, so we've got these two points. How many numbers do we need to represent those two points? How many numbers do we need to represent those two points? Just, just, just one, right? I mean, this point is perfectly represented by the number negative three, and this, this point is perfectly represented by the number four, and we can talk about the line segment geometry. Doctor, when I didn't really like geometry back in high school. Okay, guys, this is called Calc 3. It's all about geometry. Loads and loads of geometry. Okay, we can talk about this line segment. We can talk about this line segment, and then we can ask something like, how long is that line segment? Well, how long is that line segment? How long is that line segment? It's seven whatever units we're talking about. How did you get seven? Well, Dr. Moore, you're at negative three, you go over seven, and you get to four. But guys, that's not going to work. How did you actually figure out that it was seven? Well, Dr. Ryan went one, two, no. How did you actually figure out it was seven? The difference between two numbers. The, the difference. And what's another word for difference that maybe a high schooler can understand? Subtraction. Subtraction. So it'd be the, this number, this, this number more to the right, minus that number, and we get that that is seven. Just using some 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 properties of our algebra, and so we use subtraction. We use subtraction. Dr. Warren, I'm bored. Then we have this conversation. Did I just have this conversation just a moment ago? We don't understand at this level. We're going to be talking about surfaces. How do you find the maximum surface? Well, it might have something to do with. Oh, subtraction. Okay, but okay. But let's just let's go to a two-dimensional world. And now let's just say we pick two points. We pick two points, like maybe like that point and some other random point, like that. Now we got two number lines. Can one number represent this point? Can one number represent this point? Like if I say five, that point's five. Does that make any sense? No, it, it's not going to make any sense because we're now no longer on a number line, we're in a plane. And so how many numbers are we going to need to represent, how many numbers are we going to need to represent that point? Two. two. So, so each point in my plane, I'm going to need two, two, two points, two numbers, and we call it clearly the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Like for example, let's just say this is one for, 9, 12. I'm going to have to draw bigger, aren't I? Filmers, sorry. And from geometry, don't yell at me, Dr. Wayne. I think this is the first time kids won't get hurt by my voice. Most of the time I'm so loud and so 
And oftentimes I'm so loud and so like, when I, when I feel my voice getting hoarse, I'm hoping it's not Corona, okay? When I feel my voice getting hoarse, like on a date, when I feel my voice getting hoarse, I, I would realize, oh, I've been talking too much. I'm not, I'm just, it's all about me. It's all about me. Well, do you have anything to say? <laughs> I didn't get many second dates, so it just wasn't, in fact, I'm surprised I have any children at all. You know, like, my dad was a world-class athlete. World class. He threw the shot put nearly 60 feet, the 16 pound shot put. He threw the Olympic discus nearly 200 feet, which is like a big throw even today. This was the 1950s. He was one of the best throwers in the world at that time. And I was his firstborn offspring. Look at those legs. I mean, look at those legs. Can you imagine the athletic disappointment I was? <laughs> I always feel like I'm disappointing people, don't you? <laughs> Dr. Warren, you're disappointing me. Why do you make a stop? Oh, because I know you're like me. In the 1950s, you know, but your, your attention spans SpongeBob. That's it, one SpongeBob, 10 minutes. You're, you can sit there politely, write down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi, Patrick. We're gonna have lunch, Patrick. And then I'm talking, blah, 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 blah. You're writing, blah, blah, blah. And you're going, hi, Patrick, hi, Patrick. Okay. You don't wanna have you stand up and do burpees right now, but. That's a good idea. So what can I do? Let's do our gang symbol. Come on. And you at home, you better be ganging me here, man. That didn't sound right. And I'm taking it. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh. Okay. Back to where we were here. It's been nice being your teacher. When people start watching these videos. Okay. Two points to terminate. Two points to terminate. A line. Okay. How many people have drawn two points? If, if I draw you, if I draw, as your teacher, if I draw something on the board, yeah, it's all, it's all these lines right here. You know what changed my life, Dr. Oh, you're so attentive, that's it. A three hole punch. That's a game changer in education. I mean, when you take papers that you would typically in high school stuff in your book, that was my organizational system. Everything just went in the book, you know? <laughs> And then occasionally you'd like drop the book and then go, boom. Okay. <laughs> but then in graduate school, I learned to punch things. And then I put them in this thing called a three hole binder where it clicks open and snaps shut. <laughs> Mind blown. I went from a C to a B just because of the three hole punch. Okay, back to where we were here. I draw, you draw. How many people have this drawn? How many people have this drawn? Now, draw the line. Draw the line going between those. Okay, and then we come back and we can ask the same kind of question. Well, we've got these two points. We've got these two points. Now imagine this is some kind of engineering application. Maybe we're looking down on some street model, something like that. And then we can ask the question, well, what's the, what's the, what's the distance between these two points down here using our Google Map application? What's the distance between these two points if we were gonna go the way the bird flies? Does this seem like something reasonable that we should know and know how to do? Now here's the thing, guys. Almost everything that is complicated or seems complicated in calculus has its heart either at the Pythagorean theorem or similar trials. If you want to talk about all the nightmares you run into, it usually goes back to Pythagorean theorem or similar trials. Okay, you guys are going to have children one day. Should you be able to explain why the Pythagorean theorem is true to your child? Do this. Don't talk. Do this. Okay, and so, guys, this, this, this result changed, changed mankind. 
Someone said, let's at least make sure we understand it. Because so much of this class is going to depend on it. Similar triangles is about what? Sorry, Pythagorean <laughs> theorem is about what? Kind of triangle. Right, right. right triangle. So let's draw a right triangle. Call this side A, that side B. This side we cleverly call. Remember I told you we're going to start where we know something. And what's the Pythagorean theorem? What's the Pythagorean theorem declare as truth? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Trigonometry. Trigonometry. How many people like a sine and cosine? Tangent. How many people had nightmares from those guys before? That game. How many people had the trig nightmares before? On a test or on, in engineering? Okay. I mean trig. Okay. Similar triangle. Similar triangles. Distances. Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So here, why does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? And you go, it's called the Pythagorean theorem, Dr. Wong. That's why. It's called the Pythagorean theorem. So it's like me. Remember, I brought you back. It's the Houston. Give me the eye. I didn't get many second days, so I didn't. I've got 10 minutes. I can do this. Okay. So here's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. I don't think we're going to be successful in Calc 3 if you can't prove why the Pythagorean theorem is true. So let's try to understand it geometrically. One of the things that we got, it's called a squared. Why is it called a squared? That means a times a, Dr. One. Why is it called a squared? What's in the word? What's in, what's in the word? Square. <laughs> so, Dr. Warren, A. Square. You know, a times A is A squared. It's a, I mean, it's just it's naturally associated with a area. It's naturally associated with an area. So, if we think about this, what we're saying is this square plus this square plus. This square plus, now you draw what you think the next square is. This square, you draw, you draw. This square plus, this square plus, and I'll try to stay six feet away. This square plus, <laughs> this is where I would have you cheat. I often have my students just cheat off each other, not on tests or quizzes or quests this semester. But every other time, I always want you guys looking off each other. Seeing what you have. How many people drew a square? How many people drew a square? Where do you draw your square? Where do you draw your square? That, I know that's not good. That's good. Is equal to, is equal to, is equal to, draw another square. Just draw another square. What do you think the other square? Some of you already have it done. That square. So when we think about area, that's what we're trying to do. Now, this is the simplest proof I found. This is the simplest proof I found for this. The one that makes the most sense, and the one that I think if you get to across your kid when they're in seventh grade, if you take you take this triangle and you get four of them, you take four of these triangles. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this thing and I'm gonna copy it four times. I'll just draw that one there. Then I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna take my next copy. I'm gonna turn it like that. I'm gonna turn it like that. Okay, so. I'll have that A side here. Then we'll come up like this. Then I'm going to come up, take my third one, like that. Then I'm going to put my fourth one, like that. I'm going to put my fourth one like that. So I've got, I've got my four triangles that I've just laid out like this, this would be, this would be, it's all in what I just said, this would be B, this would be A, this would be B, and all of these would be C. Now this is why this is nice. If you look at the way we've, li we've lined them up, it's all in the word. 
lined them up, this is a straight line. But this angle plus this angle, that angle plus that angle, all three angles of a triangle add up to, I've been out of school for a long time. All three angles of a triangle add up to 180, or pi over two. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle has to be 180. This is 90, so these two angles have to add up to, I know this is hard, okay, that's one person. This is 90, so then these two angles have to add up to 90. But this angle here is 180, and this angle is the same as this angle, which is the same as this angle, which is the same as that angle, and this angle, and those angles. So if this plus this is 90, then this plus this is also 90, which means that's got to be a right angle which means that's got to be a right angle, that's got to be a right angle, that's got to be a right angle. So that middle object is a, that middle object is a square. You know, Dr. Warren, I'm not saying that I can hear him. Just wait. Let's add up all these areas. Let's add up all these areas. Well, how much area do I got in there? How much area do I got in there? How much area do I got in there? C squared. How much area do I have here in this triangle? How much area do I have there? Dr. Warren, I've been out of school since March. I didn't really do anything after March. I played, I tried, I tried to do what they told me to do, but I didn't really do much. Okay, this is one half of DA or an AB. And how about this one? DA, one half DA, one half DA. Now, if I add all these up, let's just add all these up. I have a C squared. Then how many half DAs do you have? How many half DAs do you have? You're just looking at them. How many half DAs? Four. I break everything. But this giant shape also has right angles added, so it's also a square. What's the length of this side? B plus A. B plus A, what's the length of this side? B plus A. So that area also has to be equal to B plus A squared, and now we just do a little bit of algebra. Who goes away and who goes away? Who goes away using algebra? Who goes away using algebra? The 2BA. And you're left there with B squared plus B squared plus B squared plus A squared is is C squared. Okay, so 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 there's the Pythagorean theorem. How many people think they could remember that and teach it to their kids? How many people think they could possibly reproduce that? I'm hoping you can. I'm hoping you can. We just started with one triangle and then we may have, took how many of them? How many did we take? Four, we took four, lined them up. So yeah, there's the Pythagorean theorem. The other thing is similar triangles. If I have another triangle that I just scale, how many people have like scaled an object before, like at the computer? How many people have made it the same size but just made it bigger? Have you ever done that before with a drawing program? Mm -hmm. Good ask. Well, how do they do that? Well, Dr. Warren, you just grab the corners, you grab it, and they get little, little, little boxes, and you just pull them. But mathematically, how does the computer do that and then project it back onto the screen? Well, Dr. Warren, that's called magic. That's called magic. That's how that happens. It's all magic. And it's all linear algebra. Math 238. It's all Math 238. How many people are going to take Math 238? Um, yes, you. you. <clears throat> okay, so let's just imagine that I take this triangle, make it bigger. scale it up, and I rotate it. Tip. Same size, like this. Well, this would be like a big C, this would be a big A, this would be a big B. But we say these triangles are similar, say that. They're similar. They're similar. All I've done is scale them. I made it bigger, I could make it smaller, and rotated them. I haven't deformed them. And then the Greeks gave us then that because these are similar, that their sides are proportional. They fall in ratios. Little c over big C would be equal to little a over big A, which would be equal to little b over big B. 
And so much of what we're going to do in this class is going to be hard. What did I just say? I know you weren't really focused. What did I just say? So much of this class that's going to be hard is going to go back to either the Pythagorean theorem or similar triangles or similar triangles. And so let me just use similar triangles one time today. One time, and then I'm going to let you go. Okay? Are we, are, we, are we good? Right now, I've got it's, who has Verizon? I only trust Verizon. 56, missed call. My kids get so pissed at me because I never turn my phone on. I always have it on silent all the time. Okay, they don't fear me at all. They fear their mother. They don't fear me. They'll ask me for anything, and they know dad will always say yes. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. That's awesome. Yeah, do whatever you want. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. They, I'm videoing this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my dear, I hope you never watch this. They fear you. The girls fear you. They don't fear me. They'll ask me anything, and they'll all say yes. So, okay, back to where we were here. Similar triangle, similar triangle. The equation of a line. The equation of a line. You know, you're like, well, what's the equation of a line? And you've learned to regurgitate y equals mx plus b. Or even if you know it, point slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Y equals MX plus B. <laughs> but you never really ask why. Why is it that? You know, like, well, Dr. Warren, it's because it's the equation of the line. That's why. It's the equation of the line but we never really ask why and so i just want to just just suggest in it and i'm going to bring things down but i'm going to show you it's not that hard what they don't say and this is where this is where it gets it gets pisses me off a little bit because kids don't get it we talk about what's the equation of the line what we're really saying is it's a set s you know like oh no dr one please not a set it's a set of all the points in the plane, all the different x, y coordinates that satisfy this equation. It's all the points in the plane that satisfy this equation. And if we can understand it this level, guys, I know we'll get lines, I know we'll be able to understand lines when we go to three dimensions. I know we'll be able to do it. Okay, but, then, but, but if we're talking about this, where does this come from? Well, let's just pick any other point on the line. Now, because it's any other, I can't call it like 15, 16. I need variables. It's all in the word variable. But if you look at what we create here by just drawing some lines parallel, just drawing some lines parallel to the to the x-axis and the y-axis. How many people see triangles? How many people can see some triangles there? How many people see triangles? It's almost like a horror movie. How many people see triangles? Have you seen triangles? But if I look here, this angle is the same as that angle, which means this angle has got to be the same as this angle, which means I've got two similar, I've got two similar, I've got two similar triangles. Now notice. How do we find the distance between here and here? Oh, we did what we did in one dimension. We did what we did in one dimension. It would be, it would be y2 minus y1. And this distance would be x2 minus x1. And this would be like y minus y2. And this would be x minus x2. But those sides, these, these, these sides are, since they're similar triangles, those sides are proportional. So we're not going to quite get this formula. We're going to get an equivalent formula. That y2 minus y minus y2 over x minus x2 is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 
And then you, you essentially have right there, you essentially have right there the point slope formula of a line. It's complicated because it goes back to similar, it's complicated because it goes back to similar triangles. And we're going to be using similar triangles a ton in this class. We're going to be using similar triangles a ton. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for putting up with me. I, now just imagine this. You're going to be on Friday watching a, a YouTube video. So let me just say this now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You might wait for the rest of the class as you pass them on the, the camera. You guys miss me? Did you miss this? Yeah. Right. I forgot how much I hate this stuff. Okay. Stay up on that. Stay up on that. And organize. And organize. Yeah, definitely that. And together. Can you uh, do the, the art? How do you uh, draw that? Or write it? Sure. So, this, typically, what it is to just make it look different. You just do two lines. Oh, okay. And you just kind of like do that. Yeah, I was going to do that. I couldn't figure out like the partial. How do you do that? Is it like you do it like that? Or how do you Typically, do the fast I'll go around like that. Okay. Like a six. Yeah, kind of like a six. I saw something do it like. Yeah, that's pretty clever. I, I, I'm not that good. Okay. Yeah, I know. I don't mind to look like that. Like yeah. that'll be the derivative. So, so yeah. Okay. All right, awesome. See you. Uh, What's your name? Uh, Michael. Michael, nice, 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 nice to meet you. Welcome back. Hi, I'm Luke. Luke. Um, I'm sure you noticed me over there. I was taking notes on my iPad. I just want to make That's fine. Yeah, it's my fault. Okay. Yes. And there's also an app that I'm using, um, a way that records audio while I'm taking notes. Oh, wow. Go through. Okay. Be okay if That's fine. Since I'm just filming up online. Yeah, I, I thought so. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. Okay. Right, thanks, Luke. Great. Thank you. Have a good one. What's your major? Uh, engineering. Engineering, okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Better say goodbye to these guys. Bye. What's your major?